So today is officially day one of starting the new vlog. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have no power. So yeah, this has uh, made things a little bit more interesting. I'm actually going to pack up some stuff here, head home, we'll do some video editing. I'll show you the project that I'm working on, uh, getting the full video edited for. So anyways, let's uh, pack up an office chair, get the laptop, everything like that, head home, and uh, we'll work from there for today. So a little bit off to a rough start, but we'll make the best of it. So after a few trips back to the office, we're finally set up here at home and uh, I can get to editing this video. It's of making a bed for my daughter, but it's uh, definitely a really cool build and I'm excited to have this. This is a lot of footage. There's over 50 hours total of actual footage that I need to go through and make into a video. So anyways, that's what I'm going to be working on today. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this and uh, we'll get started on another project probably tomorrow uh, that we can make into another project video. So for now, let's get to the editing. That's what I can do right now. So let's get to it. Welcome to day two of the vlog. Yesterday was a little bit uh, uninteresting, but today we're going to be doing a little bit more. We're going to be getting the Stepcraft M700 CNC ready to go. Also, we'll get to work on the design for this project. It's a pretty special project. We'll get into that and you'll kind of see that as it's evolving, but uh, I'm pretty excited about this one. So let's head into the office and get everything designed out. I got my piece all designed up in Illustrator, really happy with the way that that looks. I absolutely love this. This is based off of some designs the wife sent me that she liked and uh, decided to make it a little bit different, make it my own. Got it transferred over into Vetric and this is what it looks like. That's going to take some work. I need to first get everything separated out since it'll all be individual layers layered on top of each other with different colors. So I'm moving everything around here. Then I'll open a second Vetric window and move everything around. This will be for the eighth inch plywood. I'm setting a pocket toolpath here with a 1 16th inch bit. We did just release a video talking about the Vetric files, uh, the tool files that are available on our website. So you can definitely click right up there to uh, see that, see how you can get this for yourself. Because I film everything that I do, I set up the toolpaths a little bit differently and do individual toolpaths. Normally you'd just be able to make this a single toolpath and do its own thing, but I separate everything out so that I can get different camera angles, all that kind of stuff. The other larger pieces don't have nearly as much detail, so I'm using the 46200-K 8th inch down cut bit to carve in all of those, and I use some tabs to hold everything in place since they're a little bit larger. So that design is now officially done, so we can get started on the CNC tomorrow and get everything actually cut. We got all the materials back here, and uh, yeah, it should be pretty fun, so we'll see you tomorrow and get this all cut out. We're ready to get started for the day. Started off doing some computer work this morning, but now we're ready to get set up on the Stepcraft M700 CNC. We got this all over here on the table saw. I need to get that cut down, put a supplementary waste board over here and uh, get going on that. So that way we can get all of those pieces cut without cutting into the aluminum waste board on the machine. So let's get going. We'll just get this ripped down over at the table saw real quick. I'm using an 80 tooth blade here. All of the links to all the tools used in this video are down below in the description, so definitely check that out. This is ready to go, and then I'll just use some X-Fasten brand double-sided tape. I've had really good luck with this stuff. It doesn't leave any residue on the wood or on the CNC machine at all, so that's what I will be using here. I lined everything up with one of the T-Track slots on the Stepcraft M700 CNC. I'm just getting all of the bits all set up here and added to the auto tool change system. This system is pneumatic. I manually added this one, so it was ready to go. We need to create just a line reference here. That way I have a reference point where to locate all my pieces. That way I can use the same X and Y zero point. So let's uh, head and create that file real quick. We'll use the 46200-K, eighth inch down cut bit to cut that. So let's uh, go create that file. This is a really simple design. So basically we'll create a new worksheet that's a little bit undersized from the size of the board. I'll create a square and then go into the node editing tool and delete two of the spans on the rectangle. So this is really pretty simple and uh, it's a really easy way to get a nice square reference point. I'll go through and set up a profile tool path at 1 16th of an inch depth with the 46200-K eighth inch down cut bit to get that line created so that we have that reference point. So I set the depth of cut here, and then I wanna make sure that I select on the line instead of outside or inside of the profile. I'll name it, and then we'll just get that exported for the CNC, and it's ready to go. I saved it to a thumb drive, went over to the computer that I used to run the CNC, and opened that up there, and you can see that we get a little preview of what that's going to look like. Now it's time to get all the cameras set up. This is uh, easily something that takes just as much time as doing everything else on these projects. So we set our X and Y zero point uh, just on the inside there. 
And as you can see, we're setting up another shot here. Once I have the X, Y, and Z zero set, I can hit the cycle start button and we will start cutting. So it's moving back to its X and Y zero point and just going through, this is a real time cut. The down cut action of the bit leaves a really nice clean top surface and we just went through there. So this is done, I'll get it vacuumed off and we have our reference point. So now we can move onto a test piece here. I realized that I was using a tool that I had never used before with the small 1 16th inch radius point round over bit. So I wanted to make a test. That way I ensure I get my settings right on the test piece, not on the final piece. So this is one of the few CNC's that I've seen that has a auto tool change with a desktop size machine. Uh, it's a really great feature. It goes through, it uses pneumatics to pick up those bits and drop them off. And it works really well. So it speeds things up drastically when you're trying to uh, do a project with multiple bits. So we're starting out with that point round over bit. And as you can see, it just leaves a tiny little radius here. I accidentally set the Z zero position a little bit too low or too high. Uh, so I went through and did a second pass after dropping the Z position a little bit lower and got a perfect result. Really pretty happy with the way that that worked. We went back and dropped that bit off, picked up the eighth inch compression bit. A compression bit has an up cut portion and a down cut portion, which will leave you with a clean top and bottom surface. Unfortunately, I messed this one up and didn't set the Z zero. So we uh, made a mistake. Mistakes were definitely made. <laughs> I broke the bit. I definitely didn't hit the E stop button fast enough there. And it actually plunged all the way through the MDF. And I'm not sure if it touched the aluminum bed or not, but we got that pulled out. Luckily I keep two of these bits, uh, at least the bits that I use all the time. I keep at least two of those. So I had another one ready to go. Uh, we got that switched out. I set the Z zero position this time and uh, it went much better. So we went through and I did this in two passes at a quarter inch depth per pass. And it's going through at about 40 inches per minute. And like I said, with that compression bit, the upcut portion leaves a nice clean top sur bottom surface. The downcut leaves a nice clean top surface. You just need to make sure that that first pass is below the upcut portion of the bit. So using a multi-tool, we'll get those tabs trimmed out and get it pulled up. This plywood is paper backed plywood. It's just some scrap that I had. And uh, as you can see, there's a piece that kind of tore off there, but this one is done. The point round over bit is just a tiny little radius, but it leaves enough to break the edge. It's a little bit easier to do here on the CNC than it would be on a router table. Just because the piece is so small, it makes it a little bit harder to hold. So we picked up the point round over bit here and you can see a little bit better with the chips all gone. What that's doing is just rounding over that edge. I tried to pull it off the tripod and get a closer up shot. Unfortunately, they don't always work out as well as you would have hoped. The autofocus definitely kind of failed me here, but uh, that's part of the process, I guess. So these are both done and <laughs> this piece went flying. It went probably 10 feet away from the CNC, went, picked it up, used the multi-tool again to get those all trimmed out and the other two letters are done. So we'll move over to the router table, just getting the shot and everything set up using the MR0102 mini roundover bit. This bit has a 3 16 inch diameter bearing. So even on an eighth inch bit cut, it can get right into those corners. It also is a smaller diameter bit, so it's less likely to grab your piece. So I used it to trim all of these tabs as well as the micro jig grip block to help with holding all of these. So that way they wouldn't uh, slip out of my hands or anything. Again, with that paperback plywood, it leaves a little bit of fraying on the edge uh, because it's really difficult to cut paper like that. So just a quick hit with some 220 grit sandpaper and it's all cleaned up and you don't even know that anything is there. So that is now done. We got all our testing done. We have our files created, everything like that. We're ready to start making the actual piece. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with the way that that turned out. I don't really like wasting anything, so I'll probably use the letters somewhere else in his room and uh, kind of go from there. So if you haven't figured out, this is a project for our son who's on the way. He is due April 4th, and we are super excited about it. Uh, we have my little girl, Katie, and uh, she is now three, and uh, we're welcoming another little one to the world. So we're really excited about that. His name's going to be Eli if uh, that wasn't already obvious. So anyways, on the next one, we will actually get to cutting the real pieces. Uh, we've got the eighth inch plywood here and quarter inch plywood sitting over here on the bench. So now that we have everything created, we are ready to go. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If there's something that you would like to see in these vlog videos, I would love to uh, hear from you. And uh, maybe we can work in some Q&A time or if there's a story time that you guys would like to hear about, 
uh, anything about me or the workshop or tools today in general, uh, feel free to uh, drop a comment down below. We'll do our best to get to those. Be sure to subscribe so that you see all of that and uh, check out another video right over here. And we'll catch you guys back out here on the next one. Have a great day, everybody.